healing trauma, specifically uh, the concepts of trauma being frozen in the body. Does trauma get trapped or frozen in the body? The reason I wanted to discuss this because I had a uh, client who sent me a great video that I'm going to share with you uh, from someone who specializes in trauma healing, uh, but they, their approach is to try to help you to heal uh, the trauma from healing the body because there is this, um, this, this belief that our trauma actually comes from our body or it gets trapped in the body because obviously we know we're feeling the physical sensations, the anxiety, the depression, the pain inside of our system. So what do we have to do in order to be able to heal the trauma? And is it trapped inside of us? Is it something we're not going to be able to, to pull out? And if it is trapped, then in what way is it trapped? And if it's not trapped, then why is everyone saying it's trapped? So let's take a look at this, this video that, um, that was shared with me as a TikTok video. I'll try sharing my screen here. Here are a few reasons why healing from trauma should start with the body and a few suggestions for moving forward. So I'll first say that healing from trauma really should be a combination of both top-down and bottom-up modalities to healing. Now, top-down really is referring to the top part of the brain, which is the neocortex, and working your way down. That part of the brain is in charge of thought, of rationale, and cognition. Now, the bottom-up modalities focus on the bottom parts of the brain, such as the reptilian brain and the limbic system. And these are in charge of your nervous system, your survival instincts, and your emotions. Another way of saying this is that the top-down approach focuses on mindset, whereas the bottom-up approach focuses on the body. So she starts off with completely accurate facts. And she says that really you need both. You need both a top-down approach to healing and you need a bottom-up approach to healing. And she explains well, the top-down approach to healing is starting with developing a stronger cortex, your prefrontal, your neocortex, where you're going to have your higher thinking, your emotional regulation, right? You're going to be able to, to think in a more logical way. Uh, and, and this is something that we focus on a lot. If you've worked with me or you've been to uh, my, my classes, we're talking a lot about getting that, engaging that neocortex and getting the cortex to be strong so that we can overcome the reptilian brain. Now she says the other approach is going from the bottom up, which is where you have the amygdala, which is she refers to as the reptilian brain. And the amygdala and the brainstem is where you got all the emotion, right? And this is where you have your immediate responses. And I refer to this a lot as the subconscious mind, because this part of your brain, you don't directly control it the way you control your conscious mind thinking. This is something that's on an automated system. Your emotions are on an automated system. So when you feel scared or when you feel sad, your, uh, your amygdala is picking up a perception and it's giving you the emotion, the sensation that it seems appropriate for that particular perception or circumstance. The sensations you're getting are chemicals being released into the bloodstream. So she's absolutely right. We need a little bit of both because we need to learn to activate the, the cortex, uh, but we also need to learn to quiet down the amygdala. We need both. But then here's where she strays off. Now, the first reason that you start with the bottom-up modality is because trauma triggers physical reactions and symptoms, such as depression, anxiety, anger, grief, fear. Those are emotions that you feel within the body, not things that you think. And that is where she's wrong. You can actually heal depression and anxiety by thinking and by talking it out. The reason our depression and our anxiety are getting out of control is because the neocortex or the prefrontal cortex is shut down. It's not being engaged because we're too much in the amygdala. We're inside the emotions. 
or allowing those to reign free. So thinking and talking and journaling can allow us to awaken the prefrontal cortex, which can help us to quiet down the anxiety. And I've demonstrated many times exactly how we do that, utilizing the job method. But she insists that you must heal the body first. Trauma also shuts down the higher functioning parts of the brain that are non-essential for survival, like the thinking brain or the neocortex, as well as your hippocampus, which is where you store explicit memories or memories that you put into words. So you can think of it in this way, that neocortex was not present or didn't bear witness to your trauma, your body, your nervous system, and your emotions did. Now, just because you might not be able to explicitly remember with words your traumatic experience, your trauma is still stored in the body. And we hear this a lot. So how does that actually happen? So you have something called implicit memory. An implicit memory is the memory of the body. These are things like muscle memory, autonomic memory, sensory memory, and emotional memory. And that's where trauma lives. So she says the reason is because you have something called implicit memory. She's saying the trauma is stored as sensory memory, autonomic memory, procedural memory, emotional memory, muscle memory. Now, when you hear all of that coming at you, it's like, well, it sounds like trauma really is stored in the body then. But when you actually look closer at what she's talking about, implicit memory, sensory memory, autonomic memory, procedural memory, emotional memory, and muscle memory are not all a bunch of different things. Most of these actually all refer to this concept of implicit memory. Uh, the, the ability to recall something or flash back to something without consciously observing it and reasoning on it over a long period of time. So whether it's procedural, procedural memory, emotional memory, or muscle memory, which is where you're able to remember what to do with your body, all of that is the subconscious mind. It's all a part of the computer system. So, so the reason that people are saying that the trauma is stored in the body is because they don't have a knowledge of your subconscious mind and how it works. The, the mind is the operating system of the brain. Your brain is a supercomputer. The subconscious part of the operating system is all of the systems that are going on below the conscious level of understanding, knowledge, and access. Just like on your phone, you have programs, or on any electronic device, there are programs that are running in the background. That's how the subconscious works for the super brain of the computer. Again, the mind is the operating system of the brain. Most healers don't understand that. So that is why they tell you, well, your trauma is trapped in your body because you have these implicit memories and it's like, it's just like the intuition and the muscles and everything. It just, it comes to you so fast and you can't control it. It's in your body. It is not in your body. It's stored in the brain. It's stored in the subconscious mind. It is not inside of your body. It's not scientifically accurate to say that trauma is frozen or stored inside of the body. And so when they do this, and the reason why I, why I harp on this is because it can give us a paradigm, a schema that is unhelpful uh, to our healing process. Because when we hear something like frozen or trapped, it sounds uh, very perilous. It sounds hopeless. Like, oh, the trauma's trapped inside of me. So it's, it's never coming out or it's going to take years for it to come out of me. And they're not explaining why it is we're responding automatically and we're going into these implicit memories or we're being triggered by our sensory system. But all of that is just your subconscious mind. It, it moves and reacts faster than you as a conscious person can move and react. And that's for our survival. It's designed that way. When there's trauma, we now have 
the memories, the codes, the programs that are linked to that trauma. So our automatic default programming is keep the self safe. We are not safe. We cannot trust, right? And so you're walking through life in this heightened sense of awareness because you're like hyper vigilant for the next danger. But it's not that something is trapped inside of your body. It is just that your mind is in a mode. Does that make sense? Your, your subconscious mind controls all of that. So when you understand how to heal the subconscious mind, then you can heal the trauma. So as a reminder, when you experience trauma or triggers, that thinking, talking part of the brain shuts down the neocortex because the amygdala, the survival brain turns on and the language of the amygdala is the senses and the emotions that you feel. This is why you can't talk your way out of depression. This is why you can't think your way out of anxiety. You have to feel your way out. So these are the modalities that first allow your nervous system and your body to regulate and get unstuck from states of survival so that your amygdala can shut down and your prefrontal cortex can come back online. So there she was explaining about the amygdala and basically what she goes on to say is because the amygdala is hyperactive in trauma, you have to have a way of calming the amygdala down. So what her and other healers that take the bottom up approach or say that you have to heal the body first say, is you need to join a gym, you need to get into stretching, or they say that you need to take yoga, or they say that you need to join sports. And then when you're doing those things and moving the body, that will calm the amygdala. And then then that will allow you to heal. Now, it is true that physical activity does help us to get out of our trauma mindset. It is helpful and it can help us to calm the amygdala. That is why we need both the top down and the bottom up approach. The problem is you can be playing as much soccer or stretching in every different way for as much as you want. And you're not going to know how to regulate yourself when an emergency situation comes up, how to stop flashbacks, how to calm your anxiety in, in five minutes how to pull yourself out of depression uh, if it were ever to come back. Uh, so we cannot default and completely rely on the physiology. We cannot completely rely 100% on just doing physical activity as our only way of healing. Of course, I've always said physical activity is very important. It's an important part of healing. That's why every day you need 30 minutes of physical activity. Please don't uh, shirk that responsibility. Your body and your mind are intertwined. So when you're healing the body, yes, you are helping to heal the mind. You're releasing chemicals that are good for the mind. Uh, You're releasing chemicals that help to uh, fluff out the hippocampus and increase your memory. But ultimately, you don't just need to heal the body in order to heal your trauma because you're still not going to know how to regulate your thinking and all of your emotions come from your thoughts. But you also don't need to just know the mind part, but be doing no physical work, no physical exercise, no stretching, no getting to know the body. You need both. So what is more important? Well, what's more important is like saying, uh, which of a bird's wings are more important? There is not one part or approach that's more important than the other. The, the mind needs the body and the, the body needs the mind as well. They're intertwined. But at the end of the day, everything is energy. Everything comes from energy. Everything goes back to energy. Thoughts are energy. The most powerful starting point and approach to your healing process. Whether you start there or you end there, it doesn't matter. The most powerful part is to learn to regulate the thoughts because everything is energy. I won't always be able to roll out a stretching mat when I'm not feeling good. There's gonna be times I'm gonna be in school, on a plane, it's just gonna be inappropriate for me to start getting up and doing jumping jacks. Although jumping jacks can be a part of my healing process, they cannot be the only thing I rely on. So it is important that I know 
how to breathe, but also think. We feel like we can't control our emotions because they are on an automated system. The amygdala is regulating or is, is not regulating, but is actually controlling the emotions. The amygdala is the emotional control center. And it's basing it on perceptions and it's making immediate snap judgments. When you control your perceptions, you can control your emotions. Here's some, here's some examples. When you go to a party and you say, oh my God, everyone here is going to think that I'm ugly. Everyone here is going to think that I'm fat. No one here is going to think that I'm successful. What emotions are going to follow about five seconds later? You're going to be like, oh, I feel awful. I feel depressed or I have social anxiety. What am I going to do now? Well, you can hit some push-ups, some jumping jacks. You can go for a jog. But ultimately, you haven't solved the problem because even if you feel better in that moment, you're going to get right back to, oh, they're all going to think these bad things about me. But when you understand about cognitive distortions and you realize, oh, I'm doing it again, I'm fortune telling and I'm mind reading. Now you are empowered when you get off the floor and you're done with your stretching to change your thoughts. And say, let me change the wording. Let me change the way that I'm addressing this situation. How I'm talking to myself. When I go to that party, I'm going to bring the best version of myself. And if anyone doesn't like me, that's okay. Because I don't need everyone to like me. I'm just looking for my tribe. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. But some people will like me if I'm myself. So I'm determined to go to this party and just be me. No matter what other people think, I am not defined by their opinion. Now, when we, when we change our thoughts, we get in that wise mind, what happens to our emotions? All of a sudden, I don't have social anxiety. Not when I'm thinking like that. Not when I'm walking into the room thinking, hate me or love me, here I am. Social anxiety has now gone down. I'm not feeling depressed. I'm not feeling shame. Why? Because I've changed the way that I'm speaking to myself. How do we do that? Pausing, journaling. When we take that moment, we go into our mother mind, our father mind. One guy calls it your monk mind. Some people look at it as their spiritual mind. But when you go into your higher mind, you start speaking to yourself in a way that's true, accurate, but calming and wise and productive, it's empowering. And so it regulates the chemicals. So your, your subconscious mind perceives a new perception. It was giving you the chemicals that matched everyone hating you and that being the worst possible thing. Then when you talk to it differently, it gives you the chemicals that matches that reality. Hey, it's okay if everyone doesn't like me. And then it gives you the chemicals for that. It gives you the chemical cocktail for it's okay. And you feel a difference in your system. We need both. We need to know how to regulate the thoughts so that we can get out of the crushing anxiety and the crushing depression so that we can get into a mindset where we're actually motivated enough to get up and go to the gym and to do our stretches and to do our exercise and to join the clubs of course, we should be outside connecting with nature. We are beings of the earth. Of course, we need to have sunlight to feel the wind on our skin. But I will never lead you down a superficial path and tell you that, that it's just that simple. As soon as you get a little sun, you're going to feel great. That's superficial. It's not always that simple. So, so we need to learn all of the tools that are necessary for us to heal. Regulate your thinking, regulate your emotions. Oh my God, I met a man. He's the best man I ever met. He's everything to me. Oh, he's this, he's that, he's that. If you overvaluate this man, right? So now you're up here in the clouds and what happens when something goes wrong? Whoosh, you're gonna come down and you're gonna crash hard. 
Why? Because you didn't regulate your thinking. So you fell in love quickly because you overvalue valued this person. And then when you, when, when, when you find out that they're imperfect or that they're not what you thought, then you come crashing down. So we need to learn to regulate the thinking. He seems great, but I don't know him well yet. It's only been a couple of weeks. Let me give this some time. Let me regulate my thoughts. He's probably got some flaws I don't know about. So let me just take my time because really it's not logical to allow myself to fall for someone until I know their flaws. And every human has flaws. We regulate the thinking. It regulates the emotion. Then when we find out that they have flaws, when they do something mean to us, they don't pick up the phone. They don't call us. They call us a name. They ignore us. Now we don't hit rock bottom. But we're able to say, oh, well, that's why I didn't put my whole heart into that one. Okay, let me just give this guy some time because I'm not sure yet. If I regulate my thoughts, I regulate my emotions. Many of you have worked with me in the past and had amazing results. And, and some of you have already healed. But I want to remind you that, that if, you, if you have a moment where you go back into anxiety or depression, it's absolutely normal because as humans, we're not like born with one chemical balance and then we have that chemical balance for the rest of our lives. That's a lie. That's why taking a medication for your chemical balance is not always the right fit for everyone because our chemicals fluctuate throughout the day, especially when we learn how to access the emotions. You might remember the three access points to the emotional self, the access panel. Do you guys remember what those three points are? It's three things you can change in order, to, in order to change your emotions. One is your reality. One is your perceptions. And the other is your values. It's because all of your emotions hinge on how you perceive reality interacts with your values. So whatever happens to me, if I change either my value, the reality, or the perception, I can instantaneously change the way I feel. If you think that your child died, you might feel crushed. But when that reality changes and you realize he did not die, now the perception has changed and now the emotion is completely different. Oh, your son just walks in the door. Oh, I thought you were dead. Why does your emotion change? If it's a chemical thing and you can't, because it was based on something. It was based on your perception of your reality. If we, can, if we change our values, right? We, we, we love this girl so much and, and now they've cheated on us. But when we, when we devalue the person in our mind and we say, actually, she wasn't the right one for me. All of a sudden, we're not as hurt. We don't care as much about the end of the relationship. So, so these are little 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 keys, little tools you can use for your notes. Once again, that's, you can change your reality. Sometimes you can change your values. Sometimes you can always change your perceptions. You use these three points to access the emotional self. I'm giving you the keys to hacking into the emotions. When you know how to actually manage, regulate your emotions, it empowers you to pull yourself out of the effects of trauma. Whatever happened to us is not in itself the trauma. What causes trauma is not the event. It's when an event has caused us a permanent, or I'm sorry, it caused us an unwanted change. It's when an event has caused us an unwanted change. So you have the ability to fight back against trauma because if something in your past has caused you an unwanted change, guess what? 
you can change back. It's called neuroplasticity. You have the ability to go in, do the work needed to heal it, to change back what was changed from the trauma. Some of you have heard the story before. I, I, I told you there were some security guards that got really mean and gruff with me, uh, borderline assaulting. So I started to feel afraid of people that looked similar to that security guard. Now, I didn't realize I was traumatized until I was at a store and I saw a man that looked like that security guard. And all of a sudden my heart starts beating. And I'm like, why? Why am I afraid of people that look like this? Am I prejudiced? Am I racist? What is the problem? No, I'm traumatized because I had a bad experience. The trauma center of the brain, the amygdala takes a snapshot. And then it says, okay, here's the circumstances around something that was dangerous. So whenever you're in the situation, we're going to send you adrenaline. We're going to send you cortisol. And we're going to keep you safe. That's how the trauma brain works. How do I fix it? Do I walk around my whole life and say, I need to stay away from people that look like that. I need to stay away from people that look like that. I'm traumatized. I have a disability. Please, no, 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 no. Don't, don't bring me around these people. I can't watch television shows with these people or look at pictures with these people. That won't heal the trauma. That sensitivity will stay sensitized until I desensitize the sensitivity. How do I desensitize the sensitivity? Exposure. Exposure. So I had to walk up. I had a couple clerks that I could have dealt with, but I went up to this clerk that initially scared my subconscious mind and I dealt with him. I talked to him a little bit, told him the parts I was looking for, had some side conversation. In this case, it only took that one conversation to reprogram the subconscious mind to realize that people that look like that are not necessarily all dangerous to me. And I healed the trauma. Of course, at that point, I already understood how the brain works and how to heal the trauma. In your case, you may have to use repeated exposure. But even if it takes you two days or three days or four days of working on healing the brain, it is worth it because you regain your freedom. If you spend your life trying to run away from your sensitivities, that is not healing. That is hiding. And it's debilitating. It's stifling and it keeps you trapped in your trauma. So when trauma makes an unwanted change on you, you change it back to the way that you want. This requires fight. This requires executive function. This requires leadership and determination on your part. So I am calling upon you to wake up. I am asking you to realize that you are powerful. That you are beautifully made and designed. You have everything you need to face the challenges of this world. And some of us have been through things that are unthinkable. But the fact that you are still here is the reason we call you a survivor. I want you to have more than just merely being alive. I want you to really live. Surviving was just the first step. I want you now to break the chains, to hatch out of the shell and grow to your full potential to reach toward everything you can do, everything you can become.
Because there's so much more than just being alive. You can be happy. You can be joyful. You can have connection. And I want to help you guys to have all of that. So if you're new on the call and this information is, sounds interesting to you, uh, you can get a session with Marissa or myself. You go to the website, mindfreed.org. We don't charge for the sessions. The sessions are supported by your donations. If you're ready to get started right away, get into the healing course. You can access that on the website. Just click where it says learn more from Roman. Go through heal at your own pace. And be here at our meetings every Monday, every Wednesday night. I'm thrilled to be here with you. We have 53 in our TikTok and 43 here on our Zoom call. And now we want to open it up for you guys to be able to ask any questions that you may have or be able to share any experiences uh, that you want to share with us.